remember. They've well eliminated they got rid of for a while. the SAT analogy yeah. section. In fact, got Buck, this ties in with what I was going to hit you with, and I also want to get your take on Venezuela, uh, the Ukraine situation, everything else. There's a story in this morning's uh, Wall Street Journal, and for those of you that are watching on video, yes, this is my old man pulling out the newspaper moment. Um, college students can't do elementary math, Buck. This whole elimination of the SAT, I've been paying attention to it because my oldest son is doing his college applications right now, and every school is slowly realizing that the SAT was actually very predictive of your overall ability to do college work. Buck, listen to this. Um, One in eight freshmen lack basic high school math skills, okay? Students placed in a remedial, this is for the University of California, San Diego, according to the Wall Street Journal this morning. Listen to this, Buck. Uh, Because only 39% I want all of you out there to listen. I'm not trying to give you a math test, but listen to this. Only 39% of freshmen at the University of California, San Diego, this is evidently an elite uh, California school, 39% could correctly round this number. Three, third, <laughs> now I'm going to uh, get my... 30, uh, 374,518. Only 39% could correctly round that number to the nearest 100, a third-grade skill. Of this elite University of California school, by the way, the answer is 374,500, right? You're rounding it down. If it were 551, you would round it up. Only 39% of their admitted students could get that question right, Buck. Yeah. This is what happens. This is also what has happened in a lot of uh, all these schools, Clay, that have gotten rid of the SAT for application. They've fair. all had to go yeah. back to it. They've all had to go back to it because uh, you can't have you can't have any real sense as to someone's academic ability. Again, this is where it's like: is the test everything? No. Are there good test takers and bad te- test takers? Yeah, kind. Of, I mean, people get into that a lot, but you know, quite honestly. As a predictive tool, it's very accurate about your academic ability to handle these things. They got rid of it, and now they're bringing it back. And a lot of us are just saying, I told you so. Yeah, well, so, the, very obvious. the impact of it here was grade inflation has occurred to such an extent that SAT and ACT have actually become more valuable because it says here, all these kids that are failing that don't have basic math skills, they're actually testing with A grades in calculus oh, yeah. and then pre-cal and stat and all these things that should be very easily testable uh so the grade itself it's great inflation where everybody gets a's now and you basically don't have any foundational knowledge of something simple like math and and this is occurring certainly yeah. in history and english and other courses too but in math I, that that the fact that only 39 percent could correctly round that number when i read that this morning i said what are we doing like, what kind well, of world have we created? There are major constituencies for the elimination of object, objective metrics. Uh, uh, for one, the entire DEI apparatus, uh, but also the teachers' unions nationwide, uh, the, the testing gap, as it is generally referred to, particularly white and Asian students on one side and black and Latino students on the other, uh, has not budged. In, fa- in fact, if anything, it has gotten worse over the last 30, 40 years. Uh, so all of the unbelievable sums of money that have been thrown into public education in this country have not been able to put even the slightest dent. If anything, it actually has, the the, the testing gap has expanded. Uh, So get rid of the numbers, Clay. If you can't, if you can't fix the problem, the numbers show, get rid of the numbers. This is the game that they have been playing in higher ed for a long time. And there are very powerful constituencies that don't want there to be any accountability any truth, any honesty in any of this. And this is when you get people that have straight A's that are going to college who can't do fractions. They, they, you know, they can't add articles all about. And I read it half and three eighths. No idea. No idea. I mean, you know, I'm not a math guy, but I do think you should be able to do fractions when you're in college. And and again, it goes to the meritocracy itself, which is, 
the best, brightest among us. And by the way, the impact on this is devastating when it comes to producing, as you might imagine, kids who can actually major in engineering or math-related fields or be involved in the quote-unquote hard sciences that have real answers where you can't just, you and I, I mean, I was a history major. You can kind of BS your way sometimes through history arguments. Certainly you can BS yourself through a lot of English social sciences majors. Um, But I saw this and I just said, It should be. I think the White House should even get involved on this. If you're taking federal dollars, you should have to do standardized tests, and the best and brightest should get admitted to the best schools, period. That should be the the reality. And again, to your point, testing doesn't always guarantee success. There's tons of super smart kids who end up disasters, but it does give you a general baseline aptitude test compared to everyone else around the nation. And these schools, if they want to be elite academic institutions— should be in, should be uh, admitting the smartest kids regardless of what their backgrounds are